I'm here with John Lane of Centerline Digital, and he is going to share a little about his session at the Digital Marketing for Business Conference, which is at, Ra at the Raleigh Convention Center, May 6th through the 8th. John's topic is how to walk on the sea of content. Hey, John, it's good to see you today. Good to see you too, Charles. So, John, why has content marketing grown as a topic and importance over the last few years? Well, it's a great question. I, I think it's interesting because content marketing is anything but new. It's been around forever. It's just been called a lot of different things, whether it's been custom publishing or blogging or, or now uh, kind of the more in vogue content marketing. But I think what's more important is with the growth in digital channels uh, over the past few years, content marketing has become more and more important because there's more ways to engage with your audience on a regular basis. And the audience is actually craving a lot more information, a lot more value out of the products that they're looking for and buying and the relationships they have with brands. Um, what content marketing really strives to do is to create that continual connection, the long-term connection with clients and audiences and potential buyers. Um, and, and simply because of all those channels and that greater sense of connection, uh, content marketing has grown as a potential solution to that. Um, you can imagine right now that if if most buyers are starting their buyer's process with a Google search, what they're looking for isn't necessarily just the results page, but they're looking for the content that's behind that, the information that they get with each click of a result on a Google search page. Um, and that's why content's grown in importance. If you don't have the right content to engage or to be found, that's becoming much harder and harder as a brand, as a product, as a service provider, uh, to put something out there in the world that people are going to engage with and then remember and buy your product. I know there's also been some dissenting opinions lately, cases made for why content marketing isn't a sustainable marketing method for many businesses. Are they valid points? Absolutely, they're valid. I think one of the biggest points that people have been making about whether or not content marketing is sustainable is they've been uh, focusing on the quantity of content that's needed to really fo uh, it be able to pull people in and to create awareness around something or to create that engagement. And, and I think when you focus on the idea that you have to have a ton of content out there to do that, it's absolutely a valid argument. And I think that the people who are doing content marketing from that perspective of, of uh, a, a quantity are absolutely are going to fall prey to the fact that content marketing isn't sustainable because if you, if you try to create 50,000 videos, um, if you try to create 50,000 blog posts, if you try to create too much of anything, you're going to end up spending a whole lot of money um, and you're not going to be that effective necessarily because you're going to be talking over yourself. The quality probably isn't going to be that high. Um, so when people do have those uh, detractions from whether content marketing is sustainable, I, I think they make a great point. Um, but the point isn't that it isn't sustainable. The point is that you have to do it right uh, to be sustainable. And right can mean a lot of different things to different people. Um, but, but I think that that goes to, uh, honestly, something I'm going to be talking about in my presentation, and I'm sure several other people are, which is how do you get the best quality content out there in the world? How do you fight that impression of needing to put out something uh, every day, every minute, every hour, rather than finding the right thing to say and putting it out there in all the right channels? So what's a couple of methods used to prove that content marketing works? Well, what you're really talking about there is, is efficacy, obviously. Um, and, and one of the main things that I think people sometimes stumble on on content marketing is they don't go into uh, the creation of content with a really good idea um, of whether or not they're trying to create a specific impact that's measurable. Um, and what I mean by that is content marketing can, can affect all stages of a buyer's journey, whether it's in the awareness phase or a learn and solve and compare phase or even down in the buy phase or even the post-purchase phase. Um, but for each of those different things, you have to know what you're trying to measure and what you're trying to affect. If you're trying to gain awareness, um, then things like likes and retweets and blog post views and different things are a wonderful uh, metric to be looking out for. If you're actually trying to affect sales, then you have to figure out the way to measure that return on investment and the actual sales that content marketing is affecting. Um, so I think instead of uh, you know the idea of what are a couple ways, I think it's one big way and a lot of nuanced ways. Number one is to find really what is the goal of the content you're putting out there, um, deciding how you measure whether or not you're uh, actually achieving that goal or not, and then all the different little ways are all the numbers that bubble up and how you use those. You know, is this amount of likes the right uh, the right amount? 
Um, is it what we expected? Is it more than we expected? Um, is the amount of registrations on our white paper the right amount? Is it less or more than we expected? And then that second part of the equation is, what do I do with those numbers? What do I decide if it is effective? What can I do more of things like this? If it's not proving effective, how do I change it? What have I done wrong? And actually looking at, at what the numbers mean. Um, and that's the way you, tr you truly prove uh, content marketing's effectiveness, is by looking at the numbers and then being willing to, uh, to not try to prove that the numbers are right, but to take the numbers for what they are and then figure out why they are what they are and improve from there. Well, what's a couple of important tips for businesses wrestling with how to get started? The answer is, is so simple, um, and at the same time, it's extremely difficult. But uh, the answer is do something. Um, that's the way you get started. Uh, I, I think that there's two real big sides to content strategy, one, uh, or content marketing. One of them is the strategic side. What do I want to be doing? How do I do it better? How do I plan for all the things I want to be doing? And then there's just the doing side. Um, and I think sometimes the easiest way to establish a great strategy for content marketing is to actually start doing and see how it, it, what effect it has, see how people respond to it, um, start to understand more about what those messages in the world mean, and then you can wrap a strategy around it. So John, how does Centerline approach content marketing differently? One of the main things that we focus on is, is something that we call accountable creative. Um, and that plays into a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about, is starting with a purpose, um, actually going for intent and impact rather than than just trying to put something out in the world or, or to go too heavy on the quantity rather than the quality. What we do is we truly look at um, measuring up who the audience is, what channels are available to reach that audience, what's the, the, the good messages that are around the product, the service, the offering to the brand, and then actually start to tell stories that are accountable. Um, the, the idea of, of accountable creative says that um, what you're actually trying to do is create that resonance and long-term effect um, with the people that, that matter most to your product or service or offering or brand rather than trying to appeal to a large audience um, that might not ever take any action or might not start that long-term engagement with you. Well, thanks, John. I look forward to hearing more about uh, content marketing from you. If you would like to learn more about content marketing, go to digitalmarketingforbusiness.com to sign up for the conference. Again, that's May 6th through the 8th.